The Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is Monday, January 29th, 2018. We're short one member. Um, as we were just saying, uh, Scott is out at a capital planning meeting at Frontier. So we're down to just two members tonight. <clears throat> and we're a little late because I was doing another meeting downstairs. So I see our first appointment was the fire department at 6.30. Sorry, we're a little late for that. That's okay. Uh, apologies. Fire department's always on time. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we wanted to do is, uh, I know it's budget season, we're not asking for money or a lot of time right now. Yeah. That'll come later. Yeah, it'll come. Um, <laughs> with the 300th planning and, and all that's going on, we wanted to let you know that your fire department right now is turning 85 on Tuesday, February 6th. Yeah. Jimmy, you don't look a day over 70. Yeah, huh? <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have a birthday party at the fire department, oh, this nice. little thing with some cake. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to invite the entire town. We wanted to invite the select board, all the town boards, residents, things like that. So what I did is I brought invitations to invite the select board first to our to our birthday party. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. We hope that you can make it. Appreciate it. Uh, we're really proud of, of the time that, that we put in as uh, firefighters and, and where the, the fire department has come over the years. So uh, we're hoping that a lot of people can, can make it and, and just meet your firefighters. Yeah, that's nice. And, and oh, I'm here with uh, Lu yeah. Lieutenant Jim Balunas, who is also <laughs> our historian, who has gotten all, all our facts in order so that we know when our birthday actually is. Oh, nice. That's impressive. You want to tell us a birth date? You want to tell us yeah. a date? February 5th, yeah. February 6th. 530 6th. Okay. Maybe we can get that on the yeah, I was, I was here too. a year ago last year. Yep, that's right. There we go. Oh. And now you're going to have to travel for birthday cake because we're 85 now. Ah, uh, wow. Well. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jimmy. At least, the, at least the trucks aren't 85 years old, you know. Well, one of them is. Yeah. Well, now that you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll be getting to that one, I'm sure, right? You will. Yeah. Okay. That's what we'll ask for money. There you go. Thank well, thanks. You. Hopefully, uh, folks can turn up. We'll get this up on the website, too. And, so. and we'll have it on our website and Facebook page. Okay, great. Like that as well. Get some more info. All right, that should be good. So, Sunland Fire Department is having a party. It's going to be Tuesday, February 6th. Um, cake for yeah, all that cake. come from 530, 530 to 630. 630. Excellent. Can they ring the horn on the fire truck? <laughs> We may be able to. We'll see. Yeah. Reason to come. <laughs> There's a good reason to come. There's a good reason to come, my friends. Good reason to come. Nothing like a truck corn, right? Hey. Yeah. All right. Excellent. All right. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Happy thanks. birthday in advance. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Next up. Oh, and it's five minutes afterwards, too. Look at that, right on time. Uh, try treasurer collector. Come on up. Or you can stay there, actually. That's okay. Um, so, as we start with my expense budget, is up a little bit, pretty much due to fixed costs. <coughs> Point software is up 5%. Um, and postage is up. Um, yeah. At a rate increase. Just, rate. just recently, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, one thing I did want to point out about this budget is my bond was being paid from professional development, and it's now been moved into my budget. Okay. So that put that up. Okay. Um, let's see. All of the debt. It's been pretty steady um, as far as uh, principal payments. Interest was going to go down a little bit this year. Um, the library and the public safety are the biggest decreases in interest. Okay. I did put on my debt schedule final payments, the years of the final payments, which I thought was going to be interesting. Um, maybe something you guys would be looking for when we would pay off. No. So overall, a decrease. 
uh, unemployment level funded. And uh, county retirement, that's fixed. Uh, that is up, but that's, that's an assessment that gets sent to me. Um, two things, the last two, health insurance, um, it's up, it's always up. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we have um, more plans this year. We've had quite a few people come on. A um, couple, I think, increased in mostly singles, but we've had a couple family plans come on. Um, and with the change in our plan this year, um, we've added some, not deductibles, but co-pays, additional co-pays. Yep. So the plan will change on July 1st, and it made a big difference in costs. So overall, this our plan was up 5%. If we didn't make those changes, it would have been up 16%. That's so we had to make those changes. Yeah, it's yeah. like if you're not going to increase it generally, the out of pockets have to go up. Right. So that's true. And then I think the last is Medicare. Yep, so this year I tried to pinpoint things a little closer. So when, when I set up Harper's payroll, we set it up in groups. So we have pay groups. So we have municipal group, we have police, and we have school. So I did, um, I pulled out the year, last year, um, Medicare wages, and then multiplied that by the increases that each of those groups are going to have in wages this year. So the school is for two and a half percent. The police are slotted for 3%, and municipal is 2%. So I'm hoping that those numbers will be a little closer because we've been overdrawn every year. It's really hard to budget now and then have you guys give any kind of increases. So yeah. it's always just, you know, sort of the best that you can do. This year I'm hoping it'll be a little bit closer because I have the actual increases and pulled out for each group rather than doing a 2% across the board or whatever. Right, so you're using, yeah, with actual yeah. numbers. Yeah, the one that. thing on this sheet though, the percentage of change, it says 73.20 and it's not, it's actually 38%. Okay. I, it, the uh, formula was incorrect in the, in the cell. Yeah, I've seen that happen in Excel yeah. before, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually 38%, okay. Yeah. That's probably a less alarming number to folks, you know? Yeah. But the, Excel can do some strange things sometimes, so, okay, yeah. Susan, could you just um, touch on the share employees, do you feel what that is, in case there's questions? For the oh, um, we share teachers with Deerfield, and so they bill us for those teachers. Some are retirees and some are active teachers. We get the percentage of our yeah. Sure, yeah. And I've had her fix that for our percentage because they pay a little bit more and she was billing us if they're 65. We can't, we can't do that. Yes, because we're, yeah. Yeah. We, we, yep, we've discussed that, yeah, that's come up in a number yeah. of other. That's been something between the four towns when you bill back and forth like that, you tend to bill at your percentage, but we can't pay that. Yep. So I called Barb and she put it down to the 55% for us. Okay, all right. Do you have any questions, Tom? Um, software. Um, are you? Does it look like it's going to be supported for the next five years, ten years? Which software? Your for your your collect your collecting software. Yeah. Well, yeah, we just did an upgrade on Grant that Sherry had. Yeah. So you don't see any you don't see any changes being made that in the near future. No, they upgraded to um, a Windows space, okay. so we're not in the old blue screen DOS. So um, that's good. I think that's how. It's seventeen. I know, I know. Yeah, and I still have it in my other town, and it's just that little blue window oh. you know, that you work in. But um, it, I, I really like Point. Okay. I, their reporting is great. It's easy to use. You can get anything out of it that you want. So. No, no. Are you that's are important. you in, interacting with the accountant? Well, are do you, are you software wise? Software. No, we uh, we don't have anything together. So, yeah, there's, for, for Brian, data entries, I mm -hmm. Now, would that be advocated for you guys? Um, I did go, 
at, at I think last summer or early maybe it was even last year when I went up to Conway do you remember what that was yeah. and looked at Zobrio yeah there is, is a module that yeah. I remember seeing the emails go around last year about that yeah um, I wasn't that thrilled with the Zobrio <laughs> software anyway on the accountant side hmm. um, I found it not as user friendly I think as some software now, now how, how you're basically our HR department when it comes to insurance policies and so how, how's that going for you uh, honestly, or, that's... Or do you have ways that may, you can, it can be made easier for that report? Well, there's probably always ways to make it easier. Um, it's a lot to keep up on, and it's... My office is very busy. So probably um, things slip through that shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, I try to keep up on it. Yeah, I could use help on the HR. Um, I have to sit down and think about exactly what I need, and I just I, I just keep up on what I need to at the time. So it'd be nice to do a little more um, spreadsheets to track, um, you know, deductions, because we have some self-pay, we have deductions, we have money coming from MTRS and Franklin County, so. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't think a lot of people in town recognize that if there's a question, if someone from the, one of our teachers, highway, town office person, had a library, have a question about <clears throat> benefits or programs, they're coming to you for a lot of those, those answers, right? Yep. I just think it's, a, it's, there's a lot to know. There is. It would be nice to have a central person because you have the school for all four, mm -hmm. which we all use the same insurance, we just have different percentages. Right. But um, benefits are all the same. Correct. So it would be nice to have that one person who knew all the towns and who maybe take over signing people up for benefits and you know do that coordinating. I think that's probably the biggest downfall is I can't coordinate everything and then do collections and do cash book and do you know everything else that I have to keep I do know that that's why I'm asking that's yeah. it. you know that's one of the things that we always look at and I, I think it's hard I, th I think it's hard when the collector treasurer is doing the HR function also I mean because there are and again if you we have a lot of part-time employees, partial employees, full-time you know, employees. We have part-time with other towns. Um, so all those questions get, get run through your office. So I, I was just, I mean, we, we've tried for a number of years to try to work something out. We haven't been able to work anything out, right, Terry? I mean, no, the COG is the looking cog and, mm -hmm. But even if we went to the COG and the COG did it on, on the county-wide basis, I mean, they'd still have to. Re they'd still have to each town pay an assessment for the service. Mm -hmm. So there's 26 or 27 different set of um, personal bylaws and vacation and sick time schedules and unions and everything. So it's it's a, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is. So. Well, eventually, I, I would be hoping to have my my payroll clerk become more of an assistant. And maybe be able to coordinate some of that and keep the spreadsheets and you know talk to people when they come in and that's a good idea. Mm. Have help people get signed up for you know that's a good idea. Insurances and yeah, it's hard to have two people you know like like for her doing data entry. Then she sees the employees come in. She sees the W four. She does that entry, and then I kind of come in after the fact to do some of the HR stuff. So it's hard to go back and forth. For mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Um, I could probably remember more of that stuff if I was doing the actual data entry, but I don't have time to do the data entry. Yes. So, right. you know, it leaves me kind of scrambling sometimes to go back and forth between spreadsheets and people coming in and, you know, coordinating the whole thing in the end. Also make it a little more interesting for their position and stuff, so. Yeah, it would be nice to just mm. kind of dedicate that person. I, I don't know. People, um... Our, our town is, is very lucky to have um, 
its financial team the way we're made up right now. Um, unfortunately, you can look at what happens in some of our neighboring communities if, if we don't have a good team in place. So I guess I just want to thank you, um, Dr. Brian as well, and the assessors, and the town administrator. I mean, because the finances are a big thing. And it's very, it's very easy not to comply with, with what the state wants. The state wants what it wants when it wants. <coughs> um, and, and we've always got, and, and we've had very consistently good reviews since you've been in that position, Susan. So thank you very much. You do a nice, we should. Very, very nice job. I think we all work well together here, all of us in this building. That's excellent. Good. That always helps. Mm -hmm. I, I just know that when back 15, 20 years ago, sometimes things didn't run quite as smooth. And if you, if you just imagine the concern if someone's paycheck's not correct or they didn't get their paycheck. <laughs> so thank you. Really appreciate it. Thanks. I mean, no other questions then, right? No, so, all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So everybody sat in the right spots. We're just kind of working our ways back through the rows tonight, huh? Okay. So we get the uh, assessors up next. All right. Okay. So basically, the budget is the same as last year. Nothing. There's no nothing that's increased. Knowing that maybe an increase is the wages, and that depends. Uh, Besides on that, but yep. as far as uh, the general expenses, computer support, tax maps, and the data processing and the repel, they're all the same figures as the previous year. So we're not looking for any additional funds at this time. Did the, st did the state just make it every five years instead of three years? It did last year. That, is that in effect yeah. now? Yes, it is. Okay. So we're not due until 2022, because last year was our rebel year. Okay. Now, Sherry, is it the COG running a program soon about uh, homes that, houses that may not be um, lived in or oh, they have a problem yes. with? Did see that. Was it was it already done? Did they already have that? Uh, I'll check. I will double check. Unused properties. Unused properties. Yep. Yeah. Unused property. Could you check on that? Mm-hmm. Assessors may want or one somebody may want to go to that. So we do have that we have one at least in town, I think, right? A couple. Yeah. Okay. At least one. Yeah. Could be could be something interesting that comes out of it. You never know. I'm all set, too. All set? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, sisters. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Great time. Thanks. So leave the town clerk here all by yourself, huh? Mandy, now you got to move up because you're so far <laughs> in the back. <laughs> uh, got to make it look like it's full, you know. <laughs> there you go. So what's up? Hey. So mine's pretty normal too. Okay. I, I am going from three, uh, one election to three. Now. I was going to say this. Uh, I, that was my yeah. More elections this year. So that's what I'm doing. Yep. So we've got midterm congressional ones this year, right? Isn't that what we're midterms? Sure, yeah, Twenty eighteen, right? Yep. It's a little primary. And there are added costs in there because of our own Let's see. That is? It's really it. I do have, um, I don't know if you want to talk about capital. Capital? I do have, I did put in for a voting machine. Oh, yep, yeah. okay. Um, the current voting machine we have in the service. We get two or one right now? Um, I put in for two yep. because of early voting. Yes, okay. Oh. Hmm. 
How long do those usually last? Well, it doesn't seem like this one will And you know, it's like, hard. I was wondering when we got the la this one last. This is the second voting machine that I've used. But I'm not quite sure when we got. We got this one. Out. No, would the new one like operate the same way, like with the card? Or would it be a different? It, well, it'd still be a paper ballot. Okay. Just be filling that up and putting it in. Okay. Yeah, it's a much bigger machine. Is it harder to move around? Um, it, 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 yeah, it's going to be a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. it, you know, with voting, it's just going to be tough soon because of early voting. That it would be nice if, and George said he would do it, make new um, voting booths. Yep, so they were in a row so that we could vote at the library, which keeps me closer to the office. Oh, instead of doing it at the school? Yeah, the distance okay. and the time, because all the records are here. Yep, so you can minimize the back and forth. Hmm, okay. So, just so you know, if somebody's listening, we haven't changed where we're going. No, it, it, it hasn't gotten to a point where I've requested right. because to do that. I mean, the selectmen have. I hate to think people may think that the location changed, right? No, 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 no. It's, it's trying to be more efficient, but it would need to be voted on by the board. Right. Of you think it'd be more efficient at the library, especially if you have a, a big turnout? Uh, Where would uh, people park? Well, they'd have to park in the library parking lot. So you keep one machine here for early voting, is that how like, and then another one gets shuffled off to the voting site? But it's, I put it in, but um, the state hasn't okayed that you could actually tabulate the votes. Has okay. put in. Oh, uh, okay. That's, that was a big problem with um, early voting was everything went in an envelope like absentee. I remember that, right. And then it sat. People were, you know, concerned about the privacy of it. And yep. So this way, it would, and, and it took a long time to process those ballots too. So this way you get it, your early ballot goes in, it's counted right away, so it's not sitting around and it resolves some yeah, of the security. privacy and security issues. Yep. Okay, I get you. But it, it's still up in the air. It's not going with my budget time. <laughs> Because okay. obviously, if, if that wouldn't work, then getting a second voting machine would be. Yeah, it wouldn't. You wouldn't use it, right? Okay. All right. Any other uh, questions? For the time clerk? No. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our Board of Health. Hey, how are you? Good evening. All right. So, um, we're Board of Health. are submitting a level funded budget since this year 18 with the 2% increase for employees. So, that's basically uh, everything's the same. I know that um, the Board of Health secretary was split. And I think um, Sherry proposed that the total Board of Health Secretary salary come from the Board of Health revolving fund exclusively. And that is reflected in our uh, fiscal year 19 request. So what were we splitting it with before? There was some split between the revolving and the town budget. And the town. Oh, okay. So we're splitting between those yeah. accounts. Um, okay. I think it, yeah, it was four hours. The town was doing four hours. Revolving was doing five. Oh, okay. But I think she might have been working for both. That That's what I was wondering, like why it would have been split. Yeah. 
But now she's just strictly I, Board of Health. Nine hours every two weeks is budgeted for the Board of Health. Right. Yeah. But even so, four of those were paid by the town. Yeah. I don't know why. It's yeah, okay. So, um, and I, I'm assuming um, it looks like it, it can come out fine come going into our revolving fund. We had um, boosted our revolving fund for um, our public health, the communicable disease cases. Yep. We didn't use um, the boost. We had a we had a, a big case at the end of last year, um, calendar year, and um, that particular case. Uh, we didn't need the public health nurse um, because uh, the, the gentleman actually ended up going to his um, his PC, mm. and the PC reported everything. It worked with the public, uh, yeah. the, the, the DPH, so that really saved us <laughs> without us asking. Right. And um, however, since 2000, since December, we've gotten two new cases already. Mm. So it, that's why it's so very unpredictable. Yes. Yeah, you can't. Um, so we're that that have not been built yet. So okay. we're, um, but I think that if we do level funding, um, we should be fine. I, I think we do okay. How often do you like reassess like the fee, like the cost of like the fees and everything? Like, do you have like a? We did once. Um, uh, we looked at it about, I want to say last year, um, we, we want to, we, we want to be fair, you know, um, and so we realized that we, uh, we weren't really, uh, we hadn't raised fees, we hadn't, we hadn't really gone over in much of anything, yeah. um, looking back over the, um, the regs. Yep. And, um, but our, then we kind of discussed that we're really here for safety and, and the health and well-being rather than punitive. And so we're trying to, we're trying to balance, balance that. Yep. And it's, it's our revolving fund is, is, is pretty good. So we are bringing in yep. what we need. We don't seem to be, um, and and we, we do look around. We, we have we are pretty equal with other towns. With other towns, if not a little bit less. Yeah. And and that's we're okay with that. <laughs> we don't want you know. But right, you're not trying to. No, we're not trying to make money. That's right. We don't want to make money. We don't want to. Um, we're just trying to cover your costs. We're trying to. That's yep. it. And um, you know we we're just we just hired or we're having finalized the contract with a new housing agent okay. but we did just finalize someone uh, we, we voted on um, the candidate and what I did was I printed out the salaries from the for COG mm. you know yeah. I, I found it and I printed it out to see if we were around the right, uh, kind of where we stay yeah kind of and, and I think we're going to offer her a decent hourly but you know we're not offering her the top because we don't charge the top right. <laughs> and, and I think she'll be happy with it and we'll so I think that we're just fair. And if someone comes to us and they're willing to abate their problem, we're willing to negotiate on. Yeah, on the cost. And that's kind of how we, if, if we're meeting our expenses, I think we're, we just want to keep the health and safety of the neighbors. Right. And the residents, so. Have, have you looked at, um, Deerfield said they are talking about a mosquito consortium. Have you looked at that at all? Yes. Okay. I've looked at it. Okay. I was just, I was just wondering. It's extremely expensive. Um, and I... No, I just... I've looked at it. And well, I've I mean, discussed it with... Um, we have discussed it. Um, but I actually did speak with um, one of the Board of Health members from Deerfield who suggested maybe we get our name 
associated with it. Right. So that if in the future we ever want to be associated with it, right, you're, you're associated. Our name is already right, you're associated out there. with it. I am just <clears throat> so hesitant. When I say expensive, when you were looking at over two thousand dollars a year and co contributing to this consortium, I, I, I have my own opinion. Um, but we're asked, um, and I was, I didn't have an opportunity to ask you guys before. Mm -hmm. so an opportunity and, I, and I did speak with the Board of Health Chair yeah, okay. in, in Deerfield. Um, yeah, that's all. I, I and I just told her that, that we were just, uh, our mother money, I mean, I just thought it was... Mm, pretty pricey. Yes. And I know that <clears throat> they have a, they feel they have a mosquito issue. Yeah. And I know mosquitoes <clears throat> fly. They, so, they don't go that far, from what I recall. Well, but, they get but enough 10 to, miles. Yeah. I mean, so their mosquito issue and could the, be ours. Yeah. I'm guessing they have more wetlands. I'm guessing, than, even though we were Swampfield. Even though we're called Swampfield, I don't yes. know, right? <laughs> but I, I just, for the money, I just, I mean, we are a small, I, I, we could start charging more for our services, but I don't think the residents of Sunderland would really appreciate right. that. Uh, you know what, we waited. I, I really did. I did a cost benefit analysis. I was just happy. Yes, but yeah, I did. Because, I did. because it, before we start, it, I, before we start new program, we want to look at not only cost, but the ability to uh, absorb that cost long term. So, cool. Yes, yeah, but, but I, I did take it. Yeah, the cost benefit analysis. So. I, I took it into consideration and, and, and discussed it with the other board members. I didn't just. Yeah. Okay. You know, I can just right sit off in the vacuum and correct. Yeah, I'm not. And I think this is one of those things too that if you're going to do it, you know, doing it for two years and then stopping, what does that get you? You know, because right, those kinds of problems don't just disappear after a year or two. It's not a cyclical thing in that sense. Right, and I think that if if we were going to um, put some of our resources. Uh, if you're going to look at West Nile virus or you're going to look at maybe flu clinics, mm -hmm. I think our residents might be better served with us okay. investing in some flu vaccine right. rather than fighting. Yeah. You know, it, it, I, I, but, you know, and, and each, each Board of Health has different projects. Um, but I, I would just say that, you know, maybe we would work with our elder population and see what they might need. Well, especially or this year. Maybe with that cold, we might want to put some more money into a warming place yeah. rather than or fuel assistance or yeah. something other than mosquitoes. Right, and it's one of those things you assess each year as it goes along. And I think like this year, uh, that's a perfect point with the flu issues going around. Right. Flu clinic would be a lot more important right now. Sure, but I would be happy to revisit it. Thank you. Are there any questions? Other ones? Hi, thanks. Thanks. Have a good night. Getting tip. All right. Next up, our minutes from January 22nd. Motion. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, board of Selectmen updates. Uh, biggest one is we got an email today from the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, basically, they are talking to the Rural Development RDI, um, specifically about the Sunderland Affordable Housing Project, and the state has granted... Um, The RDI, the uh, tax credits mm -hmm. that they had applied for. So a little bit later than what we th were looking for, but that's a that's positive. Good. That's yeah. a very positive, uh, positive outlook for the uh, main Main Street, North Main Street, 120 North Main Street, 
uh, senior 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 housing. So that that's and maybe again yeah, we said it was going to be a longer type of process, but that's a good step forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's one of those things. It's a slow but steady march towards progress. So. Absolutely, David. Yep. Actually, okay. things take a little while sometimes. Um, uh, we're still working on our personnel committee meeting stuff. <laughs> we're trying to squeeze that in like our half hours before here. Um, I'll do a little better job of managing talking time next time for folks so that we're not uh, delayed. Apologize for that one again. Um, I think that's the only update I have right now. Uh, well, we are trying to, on a side note, we're trying to get our meeting scheduled for with some folks for our North Main Street project. So hopefully we can get that coordinated so we can get some folks down here to actually look at the site and see it and everything and see what we can work out. So. Maureen Mullaney from the FERCOG um, is helping coordinate that and they, uh, throughout the week of February 12th at 5 o'clock um, for that meeting. If Excellent. So hopefully we can get that good. We were think, what were we thinking, David? Either the 12th or the 13th? Oh, the 13th, yeah, at, at five. 5. So it would be before the selectmen's meeting, or if it's that Tuesday, it would be before the wayfinding and branding meeting at 6. Right. So I'll uh, keep coordinating with her. There's a lot of people to coordinate with um, for time. Yeah. So hopefully we can get as many people there, which would be good to. Mm -hmm. The more people we can get there, the better, I think, yeah. in that discussion. Yeah. All right. Any other excitement, Cherry? We're on to the uh, town administrator update section. I mean, it's I'm, pretty quiet. There's not much going on. Yeah, well, no. Now, right? There's all kinds <laughs> but, of things going on. Budgets are coming in. Um, some things are coming in a little slower because things are out to bid and we're waiting for um, pricing to come in. Uh, the sludge hauling bid is due on February 4th. Um, so I'm updating as information becomes available. Scott and I met last week with the um, with Joe Markarian from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments for the long range um, forecasting and planning. Uh, we're updating, we went over all the forms and the numbers, so we're updating there, and uh, I hope to have that um, next week for you. Sort of in the hunting and gathering phase yeah, of our right. budget, right? right? Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, next up we have highway superintendent. So we got a request here from George to the board, uh, dated January 23rd, for a snow and ice Deficit spending request, $22,769.45 of the $31,750 appropriation in the FY18 snow and ice expense account has been expended as of the last bill warrant, leaving a balance of $8,980.55. I have since received additional invoices for winter supplies, salt, and sand to be paid on the next bill warrant. For Massachusetts General Law Chapter 44, Section 31D, I request authorization to spend 15000 in excess of the available snow and ice expense appropriation. This amount would be used, if necessary, solely to fund supplies and materials necessary for this winter's snow removal operations. And I'll submit any future requests for deficit spending in advance of depleting previously authorized amounts. Thank you. And in case the mild weather has fooled us, it's only January 29th. We mm -hmm. still have... A lot of winter left, so. Motion. Um, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And we haven't got the report in from the groundhog yet either, so. Oh. Yeah. All right. And then our next item is a DLT request from the COG. Hmm. We've seen this before. Yeah, can we table this till the next meeting? I just want to, yeah. I haven't had, really a little, had a yeah, chance. Yes, a little more time to go through it. We have to pick our priorities and everything yeah. like usual. I know as far as regional, we've been um, throwing around ideas for IT. We could really use some help yes. with that. Yep. Um, and we also, the HR project was something the COG started, but we felt that they really needed to drill down on it a little bit more. So I think um, that was another one. And then um, there was some discussion about maybe a um, shared building facilities manager. Yep. Okay. Um, so just some ideas. And kind of hitting on some of the questions that you were asking um, Susan about tonight, I, I don't know that they really understand the full scope of like services that are probably needed out there from mm -hmm. the COG's perspective. I think they might need to do a little more homework on that. 
I think they need to involve the treasurers in those conversations yes. a little bit more to find out. I think each town needs um, something. Yeah, a little bit slightly different. different. But there's probably an underlying pattern, but then mm -hmm. you're right, but then there's a little flavor on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, any public comment? No, it doesn't look like it tonight. <laughs> um, all right, so our next meeting will be next Monday, February 5th. Have a motion to adjourn? Motion. All right. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.